Well, Pastor Derek here for our 11th day of our Christmas de devotion of good news, of great joy from John Piper's devotion. And we're going to look at day 11. Day 11 is going to be a great one. It's actually titled, Why Jesus Came. And this is important for us to consider as we prepare for this first advent of Christ, the first coming Christ, being born a virgin. As we remember Christmas, as we become a why did Jesus come? This is critical. And if we don't understand this, we fail to understand the meaning of Christmas. And so the passage today is going to come from Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. And it says, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same thing, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil. And deliver all those who were through for fear of death were subject to life long slavery. Hebrews 2 14 through 15. Uh, so, as we look at this, as we look at this devotion, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to see how the this advent of Christ, his birth, would actually point to his death. Why did Jesus come? Why did God incarnate come down, was born of a virgin? Well, it's found even as simple as this one passage here. So let's see what John has to say. He says, Hebrews 2, 14, 15, I think is my favorite Advent text, because I don't know any other that express so clearly the connection between the beginning and the end of Jesus' earthly life, between the incarnation and the crucifix. These two verses make clear that why Jesus came, namely to die. They'd be great to us uh, to us with unbelieving friends or family members to walk them step by step through your Christian view of Christmas. It might go something like this, a phrase at a time. And so he's going to now break up this verse and so he goes through it. And so he starts off by the first part, which is, since therefore the children share in the flesh and blood. The term children is taken from a previous verse, Hebrews 2.13, and refers to a spiritual offspring of Christ, the Messiah, Isaiah 8.18 and 53.10. These are also the children of God, John 1.12. In other words, in sending Christ, God has salvation of his children, especially in view. It is true that God so loved the world that he gave Jesus, but it's also true that God especially gathers in the children of God, who are scattered abroad, John eleven fifty two. God's design was to offer Christ to the world and to effect the salvation of his children, 1 Timothy 4. 10. You may express adoption by receiving Christ, John 1, 12. What a great reminder, the reason why Jesus came was for the salvation of his children. Those who would believe in the Son and be set free from sin and death, the reason why Jesus came was for the salvation of those who would believe. And anyone can become a child of God. All they have to do is set Jesus Christ as their Lord and savor. He then goes on uh, in Hebrews, it says, he himself likewise partook of the same thing, flesh and blood. This is important as he explains, this means that Christ existed before the incarnation. He was spirit. He was the eternal word. He was with God, was and was God, John 1.1 1, 1, and Colossians 2.9. But he took on flesh and blood and clothed his deity with humanity. He became fully man and remained fully God. It's the greatest ministry many, many, many ways, but it's at the heart of the faith and what the Bible teaches. And this is crucial. Jesus was the eternal God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All are equally God and all are distinct persons of God, but there is only one God, and Jesus is a second member of the Trinity of God. And he existed not prior to his incarnation. And so he is, as Oxford talks about throughout the Bible, that he was instrumental in the creation of the world. The whole, all things hold together because of Christ. And so 
Jesus existed beforehand, and Jesus then, at this point in history and time, comes down from heaven, is incarnate, becomes man, it get, is born through the uh, through the Virgin Mary, and he's entered into humanity. And he doesn't give up any of his deity, but he gets clothed in humanity. He, get, he gets low, he crouches down, and he gets down to our level. And so Jesus became man. He then explains that through death, and in this case, he talks about he became man and that through death. Now, his death is crucial. As he explains, the reason he became man was to die. As God, pure and simple, he could not die from sin, for, for sinners. Uh, because as in God and up in heaven, he can't die. He's a spiritual being. But as man, he can. He says this, but as a man, he could. His aim was to die. Therefore, he had to be born of human. He was born to die. Good Friday is the purpose of Christmas. This is what most people today need to hear about the meaning of Christmas. Jesus was born of uh, to be a man, incarnation, God in human form. So he could be a perfect, perfect representation. He could represent us. He could die for our sins and take the penalty of sins. He also represents by living a holy, righteous life. And so these things allow Jesus to be our representative. And so he lived to die and be uh, to submit to the Father's will so that, that would affect the salvation of all. And this is key to understanding Christmas. He then goes on and says, He might destroy the one who has the power of death. That is, the devil. In dying Christ, he fanged the devil. How? By covering all our sins. This means that Satan has no legitimate grounds of accusation of us before God. Who shall bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Romans 8.33 And what grounds does he justify? Through the blood of Jesus. Romans 5.9 Satan's ultimate weapon against us is our own sin. And if death of Jesus takes it away, the chief weapon of the devil, the one more mortal weapon that he has, is taken out of his hands. He cannot make a case for our death penalty because the judge has acquitted us by the death of his son. And this is a great reminder, reminder that by Jesus dying on the cross for our sin, he defeated Sin, death, and Satan. These things are defeated. These are the things that attacked us, accursed us, dragged us down. It's what makes the world uh, so painful to live in. And when Jesus died on the cross, he defeats Satan. He has nothing to accuse us of. Jesus has set us free from sin. He has set us free from eternal death. He is says free from the power or influence of Satan. We have been set free. And that is one of the things that Jesus came to do. He then says, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. So uh, we are free from the fear of death. God has justified us. Satan can overturn that decree. And God means for our Ultimate safety to have an immediate effect on our lives. He has means for the happy ending to take away the slavery and fear now. If we do not need to fear our last and greatest enemy, death, then we do not need to fear anything. We can be free, free for joy, free for others. What great Christmas present from God to us and from us to the world. This is a great reminder that one of the things that when Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins, he has set us free from the worry of death. Death that often controls people. Even today, people are driven to do all they can to avoid death and all the consequences of death. But as proven, everyone will, will die at some point. But Jesus has defeated death. There is no great enemy because one day, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will go to be with the Lord. You have no reason to fear death. 
And at some point in the future, there will be a great resurrection and you'll be resurrected with to the Lord. And so their death has no sting. It has no victory because it does not hold us back. Because we know we are in God's hand. We know if we die, we'll go be with the Lord. And one day we'll be resurrected. And so there is no death for us to worry about. And what a great encouragement. Especially as so many people are afraid because of COVID and everything else going in the world. What an encouragement to know that we have a hope. A hope that we are set free from sin, death, and the devil. And we can be free and to glorify and give worship to Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, who sacrificed all so we can be free. God bless you. Have a great day. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.